Hello and welcome to the first of the NV Sarscape analytic walkthroughs. In this video and the ones to follow, we're going to be going through the step-by-step -step process of running different SAR tools with the easy-to-use Sarscape analytics toolbox. Though synthetic aperture radar is complex, these workflows make it so anyone can run SAR processing for themselves. In this first example, I'm going to be going over the automatic flood mapping tool. Flood mapping with SAR data is highly valuable, as SAR can see through clouds and rain, making a tool that can be used while the flooding events are occurring. This example is going to be using the European Space Agency's free Sentinel-1 data over the Bahamas to capture the flooding that occurred during the Hurricane Dorian, a Category 5 hurricane that made landfall in the Bahamas and caused rampant destruction and major flooding throughout the islands. So let's get started. To run this tool, you are going to need one post event image, which is a SAR image from either during or after the flooding event. Then you will need multiple pre-event images. These are used to build up a baseline so we can see that changes are occurring between the pre and post event imagery. You can also choose a shape file to cut down on the size of the imagery processed as Sentinel-1 scenes are very large. There are multiple DEM options. You can either automatically extract a DEM, which is what we're doing in this example, or if you already have a Sarscape DEM file or even a DEM TIFF file, those can be used as well. Let's take a look at a few of the other parameters. The first two are the ratio threshold and the pre-event image threshold, and these are both in decibels. The ratio threshold is used to look at the change between our pre- and post-event imagery and to find the areas that are flooded. The pre-event image threshold is our water's response in decibels in the pre-event imagery. Underneath that, we have the slope image threshold, which is in degrees and is used to constrain the areas that water cannot physically be because the slope is too high. Underneath that is the step for classification filtering, which will aggregate and see if our results to clean up some of the speckling that occurs. You can then choose your output directory for your final products, as well as the intermediary step outputs. There are options for the full there are options for what you can do with those intermediary steps, such as delete them or save them. When the processing is happening, you will be able to see the steps that are being done on the screen. For an overview, we are importing the SAR data, using the DEM, looking at the difference between the pre and post scenes, and that will lead to a preliminary automatic classification. Once the automatic classification is made, it will go through the aggregation and sieving steps because we had that automatic classification filtering step checked. And then we get our flood map. First, we're going to look between our filtered and unfiltered classifications. As you can see, the filtering has removed many areas of extraneous speckle that appear in our results. But this needs a little more context, uh, so I'm going to grab the intermediary files that were created, one being the pre-event imagery and one being the ratio between the pre- and post-event imagery. And these are found in that output folder that we chose. So let's first take a look at that pre-event imagery. With it, we can overlay our flood map and now see how the flooding areas appear over both the Grand Bahamas and the Great Abaco Islands. The flood mapping is widespread in the areas of low elevation and covers many of the smaller land masses as well. With the pre-event imagery as the background, the black of the, is the water's response from before the flooding. And next, we're going to take a look at the ratio. So the ratio output was used to create this classification, which compares the post and pre-event changes. And those areas in black are where all the new water was found. This is the end of our first workflow, the automatic flood mapping tool in the NV Sarscape Analytics Engine. I hope you guys found it useful, and I'll see you in the next one.